Ahalin, Maui and Trizzy here. Our last morning on the Nau River cruise tour, we woke up in Aswan. Good morning from Aswan. Initially, we had planned for two nights here. If you're just joining us for the first time, check out our previous videos to see why we're only spending one night in Aswan now. And if there's anything we learned from being in Aswan for just one night, it's to stay more than two nights there. Aswan is an amazing and unique part of Egypt, full of sights, art, and culture. So here we are, first stop, Abu Simbel. Our pickup was earlier than when the breakfast buffet opened, so the crew on board packed us a hefty takeaway package as we parted ways. We arranged our private driver to the Abu Simbel temple through our Aswan accommodation, the Anakab houseboat, for 2100 Egyptian pounds, $70 USD. The drive from Aswan to Abu Simbel was three and a half hours. Yes, it was a long drive. We were in the car longer than the time spent at Abu Simbel. The temple was in southern Egypt, which is very close to the border of Sudan. Is it worth visiting? Most definitely. There's no doubt that this temple was our favorite of them all. Entrance fee was 275 Egyptian pounds per person, $9 USD. Abu Simbel settles along Lake Nasser. But back in the day, the original location of the temple was where Lake Nasser currently is, before the lake had water. Bit by bit, men and whatever technology they had in the 1960s moved the blocks up to its current location to preserve the structure from the incoming water. Every angle of the blocks were strategically placed to precision and perfection so that twice a year, the sun will shine right through the halls inside the great temple to illuminate three of the four deities displayed at the far end of the temple. These three were Amun-Ra, King Ramses II, and ra Harakti. This is a mind-blowing feat and to this day, people can experience the Sun Festival twice a year on February 22nd and October 22nd. Those two dates were King Ramses II birth date and coronation date. He was also the builder of the Great Temple and the Small Temple in Abu Simbel. And it is definitely known that he played a major role in this development. You'll see four of his giant statues on the outside of the Great Temple. His family members are displayed at his feet. Due to an earthquake, one of his statue's upper body collapsed, which you can clearly see the piece on the ground. While you're waiting in the unregulated line to get into the Great Temple, you might be telling yourself, wow, I can't believe I'm here. As we look back on our photos and videos, we still are telling ourselves that. Once you're finally inside the temple, the hieroglyphs tell a story of King Ramses II's victory at the Battle of Kadesh. More remarkable statues of him lined up in the first hall. As you continue to walk, you'll see the four gods in the back sanctuary. Abu Simbel was special for its architectural history and mathematical repositioning. For it to have a view of Lake Nasser makes it a peaceful visit, although it was a crowded experience. But we can't end this tour without showing you another gorgeous temple right next to the Great Temple, which was built for Ramses II's wife, Queen Nefertari, and the goddess Hathor. This is the small temple. Statues of both Ramses and Nefertari are showcased on the exterior. Ramses created Nefertari's statue just about the same size as his, proving her high status and also his love for her. Inside the small temple is several depictions through hieroglyphs, one being Ramses and Nefertari presenting offerings to the other gods and goddesses. We took a stroll closer to the lake to really take in every ounce of hard work and beauty Abu Simbel carries.
If you drive two and a half more hours south from Abu Simbel, you'll reach the border of Sudan, where the Nubian culture originates. Obviously, this wasn't in our private driver agreement, so back to Aswan we go for another three and a half hours. Making a pit stop to witness a mirage in the desert, we saw a mushroom and fish-shaped refraction within the mirage. Fascinating. Three and a half hours later, we're back where we got picked up, which was perfect because our Faluka pickup to our houseboat was right there, right next to a KFC. And let it be known that this KFC is also the landmark of the public ferries if you're going over to the Elephantine Island. As if our trip couldn't get any better, the golden hour was shining and showing out while we were riding our Faluka to our houseboat. We took all the natural breeze in after being stuck in an air-conditioned car for three and a half hours. The sunset, radiating its rays on the subtle waves of the Nile, nearly brought tears to our eyes. A 15-minute ride went by too fast. But upon first glance of our houseboat, we couldn't wait to go in and get settled. Keep watching as we'll give you a tour around the Anacob houseboat. We quickly freshened up and hopped on our personal felucca to head down to the Nubian village before the sun completely sets. What a beautiful, relaxing ride down the Nile. Other feluccas were riding alongside us towards the same destination. While you're here in Aswan, you'll see somewhat of a cultural difference from the rest of Egypt. Here, you'll experience more of the Nubian culture. Most of the locals speak the native Nubian language rather than the widely used Arabic. Because Nubia is a region between Northern Sudan and Southern Egypt, it was known to be a trading hub between the two countries. The Nubian village is a definite stop while you're visiting Aswan. You'll be surrounded with vibrant and colorful buildings, shops with plenty of souvenirs to choose from, and locals who will invite you into their homes. If time allows, you can eat a meal there. There are also accommodations to stay at, but keep in mind you'll need to hop on a boat to get to the other mini islands and to the main town in Aswan. After about 30 minutes of roaming around the village, it was time to go back and relax on the houseboat. The private felucca that comes with the houseboat charges 200 Egyptian pounds per hour, $7 USD. However, arrival and departure rides are included. We booked the Anacob houseboat on Elephantine Island through Orbitz but they are available on Booking.com, Airbnb, and directly on their site. With taxes and fees, we paid $75 USD a night in mid-November. The room amenities were a comfortable queen bed and a clean, spacious bathroom. The boat has three rooms total, each with their own bathrooms. Shared spaces were the kitchen, indoor and outdoor dining areas, and the sun deck. This is the way to go if you're trying to support a small local business and have a unique experience on your trip. Meals were not included in the stay. Sadly, it was just overnight, so we only got to enjoy dinner and breakfast, both extremely delicious. 
for dinner, we enjoyed the tagine fish and tagine chicken. We concluded the night with some tea under the stars. The morning came and we made it out for sunrise on the sun deck. Something you have to experience if you're staying at Anakob. It's peaceful and the Egyptian sky is normally clear throughout the year. Your views are the botanical garden at the island across, a mausoleum sitting atop a hill, and the gentle waves of the Nile. We grabbed some more tea and coffee and waited for our carb-filled breakfast. We checked out and paid off our meals, which they only accept cash there. We weren't ready to leave, but we had to make our way back to town. Hi Colonel Sanders. This is where we were getting picked up for our next adventure, Marsa Alam, a beach town where the Red Sea is, so stay tuned for that. If we've convinced you enough to add Aswan to your Egypt itinerary, we suggest at least three nights there. That way, you'll be able to see Abu Simbel, which takes a whole day, the Falay Temple, High Dam, Nubian Village, and the other temples and relics around town. If you decide to stay at Anakob Houseboat, bring some drama mean. It's not bad on board, there's barely any motion, but just to be safe in case you get motion sickness like Trizzy. We love sharing our Egyptian dream trip with you all. If you haven't seen our previous videos of our time in Luxor and on the Nile River cruise, please go check that out and show it some love. Cheers to a short but lasting memory at Aswan. Thank you for watching Maui and Trizzy. Subscribe and get notified for more of our experiences around the world. Shokran!